So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. And now for the review of the day. Okay, I got a five-star review here from Pat Blaine Mac. Uh, it says, uh, five stars, great. This was recommended to me by my boss and it is full of great advice, which I'll be keeping in mind every day. I'm doing business as a result of these tips. Always my pleasure to listen. Thank you, Pat. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. Rockstar Nation, thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to stay to the end where our guests will be offering a free gift. As you know, all of our guests offer a free gift and all of these gifts can be found on the Agent Success Toolbox. You could find that by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or simply texting the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox to 444-999. I am going to put today's free gift in today's show notes but if you want all of them including gifts from most of our guests that have come on the show just go to the agent success toolbox all right what's up rockstar nation this is ian lobos from baltimore real estate agent and team owner and i'm filling in for pat hyben today on real estate rockstars and i have a really special guest all the way from the west coast in the bay area Felicia Mares. Did I get that wow, right? Wow, what a great intro. And you actually yeah. said my name right. <laughs> it's good I and didn't Felicia, coach you on that before, before we started recording. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really glad we practiced. Felicia is a NAR uh, 30 under 30 winner, killing it out in the Bay Area, two years in business, works for a husband and wife team, and is super involved with the Realtor, Realtor Association uh, in her, in her uh, city and starting to go national. This one's important for all you guys, whether you're new or not, to pay attention to because Felicia's gonna tell us about involvement in local culture and social media and how that has helped her become a rock star. So Felicia, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Thank you so much, I'm so happy to be here. I don't yeah. know if you know this, but I've been listening to the show since I got started, since before I got licensed, so. Wow, I love I'm that. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, for sure. So let's just get right into it, right? So how'd you get started in business? Why'd you get started in business? Why real estate for you? Let's talk sure. about it. Yeah, so I um, actually grew up in the area that I serve. So I grew up in Richmond, California, which isn't like, you know, the best place in the world to grow up. It was a little rough, but uh, I turned out okay. So, um, and I have two older sisters, um, parents who I adore, uh, I went to UC Davis for college. I got my bachelor's in psychology. Nice. And then I um, came immediately back to the Bay Area where I was a full-time nanny for over five years. Um, and I loved, I loved being a nanny. I thought I was going to do it forever. And then I realized like, hey, this is really exhausting. I'm really tired. I'm going to want to have my own kids someday and I'm going to have no energy <laughs> left over to raise them and they're going to be crappy people. So... <laughs> I had to switch gears a little bit. Like I looked around at everybody I knew in my life and I was like, okay, who is doing really well financially, has a healthy work-life balance and actually spends time with their children. And I looked to Cameron and Nicole Platt who are my current teammates. I love that. So tell us a little bit about your life. Like why did you decide to get into real estate? Why, why was that the choice? Um, I mean, yeah, like I said, it was really just that, that healthy work-life balance was really attractive yeah. to me. Making my own schedule was attractive. I had never really worked super traditional jobs. I had always been in either childcare. And uh, when I was in college, I was a housekeeper at a Motel 6, actually. So that was kind of the worst job. I have some stories about that, but we can talk about that later. 
Um, so I think I've always kind of been in the, the service based industries. I yeah. mean, you know, I had the patience that it takes because I had always worked with children um, and adults are really just grown children. Right. So nice. my clients just kind of changed a little bit. Um, but yeah, I needed, I needed to have that feeling like I'm taking care of someone cause that's what I've always known to Love do. It. And so real estate was kind of the perfect place for me. That's awesome. Yeah. What about your, um, so you've been in business two years. What about your production? What's that look like? So how many units did you sell in the last 12 months? Sure. So there are, let's see, 13 transactions. Okay. Um, and that is, I had two listings and 11 buyers. Um, so I am mostly buyer based, um, which for now is perfect for me. And I love being a buyer's agent, yeah, you love um, serving. especially with first time home. Buyer. yeah, I love serving and yeah. I love, I love that feeling that it get that it gets me. So, um, and, What's your average price point out there? Um, well, let's see. Last year, my average price point was six hundred thousand, okay. um, and the average price point in in general was about seven fifty. So yeah. I was doing a little bit of the lower lower level stuff, um, which is fine with me. But you know, mm -hmm. obviously, you want to slowly increase that as you go along. So this year, so far, it's it's raised up a little bit. My average price is uh, seven forty. Okay. And I, I say that to our audience because for, for most of the audience, like myself that are in normal parts of the country yeah. that like the average is 250, 300,000. Not normal um, here. You know, anybody I talk to in California or most people I talk to in California, they do like 25, 30, 50 transactions a year, but your average price point is so high that, right. you know, it's triple what, what ours is. Right. Exactly. So, so, so when I say 8 million, people are like, whoa, but I'm like, it's really only 13 deals. Like that's right. not a ton. Which is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah, funny because you're at the low end of your market at 740. <laughs> I love yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. I'm moving to California. Yeah. Come over. You can yeah. join the team. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> so my, um, so my, just so I give you the, the team numbers sure. too. Um, we closed 50 million um, with 48 transaction at a $1 million average price. Um, wow. for the okay. So you can tell my teammates do a little bit of more high end stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what is that GC or sorry, what's that um, uh, GCI look like? Um, so I made, let's see, 97,000. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Not for your second year in business. Yeah, not bad at all. Oh, I love that. And then um, do you cover any expenses for the business or does the team do that for you? Good question. Yeah. So I knew you're going to ask about my profit margin and yeah. I was going to say, dude, I have no idea because I hardly <laughs> spend any money on my business. Um, okay. I have not dived deep into any kind of like advertising or anything like that. So my, my pro I am with a boutique brokerage called Abio Properties. Yep. Um, so we have about 30 agents in this brokerage. Um, super hyper local. We only have two offices here. They are full service brokerage. So I get pretty well taken care of here. I'm a little bit yeah. spoiled, um, especially, you know, I don't know, doing pretty well, even, even though I'm a newbie. Um, I, our brokerage doesn't actually have any newbies. I'm the only one. Everybody else is like <laughs> these super amazing, Weird. like badass people who have been doing this forever. So um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a spoiled brat over here. So my profit margin is probably better than most. <laughs> I love that. So you mentioned already, and I want to go back to the team. You mentioned you did two listings and uh, eight or nine buyers. 11. Which, what does that look like? Oh, yeah. let's 11 get buyers, sorry, excuse me. Two listings <laughs> and 11 buyers. Right. Got it, okay. I don't wanna shortchange you. Thank you, <laughs> appreciate it. How about your team? So 50 million in production, uh, you said 50? 40, 48 transactions total. 48 transactions. How many of those are listings and how many of those are buyers? Um, so they, the team splits it about 50, 50. Got it. Okay. Okay. And then what's the, what's the biggest source of, of leads for you guys, like for you specifically, and then also for your team? Yeah. So the team, they do a ton of referral business. They've been around, he's been doing this for over 15 years. So, um, for them, it's mostly referrals for me, 50% of my business last year came from open houses. Oh, cool. Okay. Let's talk a yeah. little bit about that. So yeah. what's your strategy at an open house? Sure. So when I first started, I was like, you know, super nervous to do an sure. open house because it's weird. You have to know how to answer everybody's questions. And I had no idea what to expect. Um, and so I would like dress up and like wear like a dress and like the heels and have my cards and, 
you know, be all salesy and do all these things. And then I was like, this just feels so wrong. Like, this yeah. is not me. Um, I'm like young. I'm like, I like to think of myself as like a kind of hip person. <laughs> so I started like dressing more like myself. I started playing like hip hop music or like Motown, which is my parents like favorite. I grew up listening to Motown. Nice. So I usually play Motown in my open houses, which people love. And I'm usually like dancing around and like, you know, having a good time. Um, I've learned to predict the questions that people are going to ask. Um, so I make sure I'm always prepared on that front. And then I just have like cool conversations with people. Like I've actually met friends from open houses before just by like shooting the shit, you know? Yeah, I, I've, I've done the same thing and I absolutely love that. Um, I have some best friends that I met at an open house. Uh, so cute. I you just love have it. to be, so, so what you're telling our audience is you just have to be you. Don't be yes. a salesperson. Don't be yeah. the person that is putting on a show or a front. I think open exactly. houses are a fantastic way of generating business. Yeah. You I know, mean, it has been for me. So, so what is you, what do you do right afterwards? So let's say that there's a, there's an agent, um, that is listening to the show right now. And they're like, you know, I, I was doing this, this, and this, and I just got into open houses and they want to rock it out. So like, what, what would you say to them is the best way to uh, attack the open house and to follow up from the open house? Sure. Yeah. So I, I make sure that you're asking the right qualifying questions during right. the open house. So I always make sure to ask like the way that I phrase it is like, how long have you guys been looking? How's your home yeah. search been going? So that way I can see, are they serious? Are they new? If they're new, they're probably unrepresented and I can like attack them right. <laughs> there if they've been if they're like i've been looking for a year i'm like oh you already had plenty of people try to sell you plenty right all right have fun at this open house <laughs> yeah 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 let me know if you have any questions right? right um but for those people who i think might be unrepresented then and and i'll i'll flat i'll ask too like are you already working with a realtor because our community here is so tight-knit i don't ever want to steal anybody's clients sure. unless the client is super unhappy then sure they can switch over um as long as they're actually firing their past agent right. but um yeah, I don't poach other people's agents. So I always like to make sure and I get the name of the realtor and then I'll probably reach out to that realtor and be like, hey, I saw your clients. They loved you. I said good words about you. And I always right. do. I'm like, oh, I love them. You're in really good hands. You guys are going to do great. Um, and if I don't like them, then I just, you know, I'm like, oh, good luck. Good for no, you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> why, so, don't, why don't more agents ask someone not only if they have an agent, but if they've signed something with an agent? So I don't actually ask, do you have an agent? I say, who is the agent you are working with? Because right. a lot of people will lie and say they have an agent and they don't. And then they can't think of a name. So that's a good point. I say, who are you working with? They'll either give me the name or they'll say they don't have anyone. All right. So why do you think that most agents not only don't ask or sorry, why? Yeah. Why do you think that most agents not only don't ask if someone's represented, but if they've signed buyer agency with that person, with that agent? Well, I think people are like turned off by coming on a little bit too strong. Um, but I think there's a gentle way to go about it and you don't need to be like, you know, have you signed anything yet? Because it right. might be a little dramatic. <laughs> I think a better way to go about it would just be like, who are you working with as your agent and see if they have a name for you. If they say a name, then you know, it's legit. If they're like, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't have anybody, then you know, they're unrepresented and you can ask follow-up questions. So I always like, try to get to know them a little bit. And I, I actually have a note um, in my, my phone. I'll write down little things that I notice about them. Um, if they like drop little hints about like, you know, them having a dog or their kids or whatever, sure. what they're interested in, I'll write those notes down. And then for my follow-up, I'll make sure that I'm including some of those personal things so that they know I was paying attention. Sure. So are you following up by phone, by email, text? Um, I typically do email because um, we do have an amazing CRM that we've built like through our brokerage. Yep. Um, so I put everybody in there and then I follow up via email. If I don't hear back, I'll give them a call in a couple, in a couple days. Do you put people on an open house drip campaign? Like something that you've already um, started? We have those available, but I don't do those because I feel like I've already made some, if they're in my CRM, we've already yep. made some sort of personal connection and it doesn't feel genuine to me. Um, so yeah. I've created my own templates, but I won't send them in a drip. I'll, I'll make sure I'm sending the right ones to the right people. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. That totally yeah. makes sense.
tribeofmillionaires.com. Guys, write that down. Rockstar Nation got a free special offer for you. Now, I've just written a book and it's just been published. Co-authored it with David Osborne, who's been on this show multiple times. If you don't know David, he is one of the top execs at Keller Williams Real Estate, was personally mentored for the last two decades by Gary Keller himself. And he's in all kinds of businesses. His bio and explanation and everything is in this book. But anyways, David and I got together. We decided to write a book. We called it Tribe of Millionaires. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your life. To find out more, just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. We're going to give it to you absolutely free. Only thing we ask in return is, of course, number one, you pay the shipping. Not a big deal. But number two, that you go on Amazon and write us a review. We're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. It's Team Tober here at Rebus University, and we're running a special for Real Estate Rockstar Nation. This special is going to save you 90% on your team's real estate training. And the cool thing is, as a team leader, you don't got to do nothing. Just put your team to work on this incredible training here's how it works this week it's the five alive course by Chantel Ray's five alive course Chantel Ray has a guaranteed salary at her brokerage of $75,000 per year per agent like guaranteed if they don't make that in sales she gives it to them in cash how can she do this well she puts them through an intense program to guarantee that they all make 75 G's or more. Many of them are making 200 grand or more this year. And you can learn everything about this system and how to apply it to your agents and your team by taking Chantel Ray's Five Alive course only available at Rebus University. Now the cool part is you buy this course this week, I'll give you nine for free. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a 90% discount if you basically have 10 of them and you give them to all of your team members. That way you're not just taking it, but all your team members are taking it and you can talk about it at the company meetings and you can talk about it every day or every week if you want to about what the progress is and what everybody is learning. Of course, when you buy these, they're good forever. So if you don't take them simultaneously, you could take them over time, but I recommend you take them all simultaneously, you plus nine other members of your team. It's simple. You buy one, you get nine free this week only. This offer is only valid for this week only. Next week will be another course. Go to hybendigital.com backslash teams. That's hybendigital.com slash teams. Now, this year, what are you looking to push in terms of your volume going up? Are you looking to get more listings? Are you looking to get more buyers? Um, you know, my, my focus has been on buyers. I was really looking to push my price point up, which has been happening so far. So that's been amazing. Um, and I'm really just looking forward to, I don't know, kind of, kind of doing a little bit more buyers. I've done a lot more listings with the team. We're kind of splitting the work at this point. Sure. Um, so that's been super helpful and it makes me feel a lot more confident going into listing presentations if I yeah. like, you know, done the whole thing. So I know eventually my business will go in that route, but I'm just at the point of my life where I'm like, I really enjoy buyers. Sure. I like am at the same age as a lot of these buyers. So it just makes sense. I totally agree with that. Yeah. So, um, other than the SOI and open houses, what other sources of business do you have? Sure. So um, social media is huge for me. Um, I have actually sold a house on Instagram. I was posting it on my story and I got a DM and they were like, hey, this looks really cute. We, weren't, we haven't even been looking in this area, but this looks like perfect for us. Can we come and see it? And I'm like, sure. So we go, they weren't even my clients. Okay. These are just people on Instagram. Sure. So we, we go, I show them the property and they end up buying it. So it was amazing. Um, so I am an oversharer for sure, but it's brought me business so far. And so I will continue doing that. Break that down for us. So what's an oversharer mean? What are you <laughs> sharing by the way? Cause you're not just sharing anything. You're sharing 
specific stuff. Oh yeah. Everything. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I talk a lot about my own personal life on there. I think it's really important to be authentic. Same as like when you're doing an open house, be authentic. When you're on social media, be authentic. Nobody sure. wants to see just sold, just sold, just sold. Like that's super boring. I, right. I wouldn't even follow it and I'm in the industry. So if you're one of my real estate friends and that's all you post, like you might see an unfollow from me in a little bit. But <laughs> what if people want to celebrate their wins and also share other things? What other things would they, should they share? Sure. So I, I really love when people share client photos. Um, if your clients are comfortable with it, taking a photo of them outside the house or while they're like doing their inspections or um, while you're giving them their gifts or whatever it is. Um, but I think the caption you write is super important. So instead yeah. of just being like, I'm so happy for these clients, which you are, and I get it, but also Boring like, give though. us a little bit more, you know, we're yeah. all nosy people and that's why social media has done so well because yeah. we're super curious and we want to learn about each other. So please tell me like a little bit about their story. Tell me like who, if they have children, tell me like how hard it was for them. Tell me about their jobs. Like I want to know yeah. the nitty gritty details because I'm really nosy. That's cool. So do you do that stuff? So like when someone follows you on Instagram, they're seeing your entire world. They're not I just see seeing a lot of my yeah. personal life. And honestly, yep. sometimes it gets weird because people will see me in person and they'll comment on something that they saw online. And then I'm like, Oh my God, how did you know that? But duh, it's because I shared it. So that part gets kind of weird. Um, yep. Especially when you're going through really personal things. Like I had a, I had to take a, a couple weeks off of social media last year when my father passed away. Um, because I just needed that time in that space. And I actually just asked my friends online, like I was like, Hey, I'm going, this is what I'm going through. No, I don't want to talk about it. Right. Please don't DM me. I'm not in a good space to like do all these things. So like, I'm going to be gone for a few weeks and, and I was, and then that was fine. And then nobody ever brought it up again and it was awesome. So <laughs> I love that. I love that. So you're, you're quite resourceful. Thanks. I, I like to think so. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, you, you have such a simplistic, it's almost like it's, it's, it's too simple, but like, I want, I want to make sure that the audience understands that as easy as you're explaining this, there is depth to this and there, and there is purpose to all this. Sure. I, I know that like when I first started, someone gave me very good advice on social media and said, don't get into things that people could battle you on because if they right. battle you on it and you don't know they're battling you, they might not choose you and that's right. not fair to either party because you could be able to help them. So like political stuff or like religious stuff, like things that people have very big opinions on, stay away from it. You're th this person said to me, you're a public figure. Don't, don't be a public figure that has an, an, an insane like opinion on some right. side. Right, right, right. Roll down the middle and don't so comment on those things. That part's a little bit easy for me just because I live in the middle. I'm like a very right. like non-extreme person. Yeah. I understand everybody's points. Like I'm like, even with like that, I'm like, okay, I could see why you would think that. Sure. So for me, it's super natural and easy. Um, but I, I follow a couple of people who like are very passionate about their side of you, especially with like politics. Sure. And I'm like, that's okay. Because if you, if you're that passionate about it, maybe you don't want to work with any clients who are the opposite of you, you know, and that's fine for you. Totally. But I like to live in the middle. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like yeah. living in the middle doesn't mean you're boring or you're, you're right. like, you don't have a backbone or something. Right. No, mm -hmm. I can state my opinion and I can figure out right. arguments for it, but I can yep. also understand your side of it. And I don't need to get into, I don't, I don't argue in general in my normal life. And like, yep. I also don't believe in like arguing in social media. I think it's like a really weird space. No, for it's, it. it's yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. it, there's, there's, there's a, there's an element missing that in most people's lives, that element needs to be there for you to have a, a, a real argument with someone. Right. You no, know, somebody, oh, actually a coach of mine told me that there, there's three things that most people are. It's agreeable, assertive, or an a-hole, the three A's, right? And you, most people are agreeable until they go to an a-hole. And, but most of the time, if you can walk down the middle and be assertive, like you can form an opinion right. and you can be okay with giving an opinion, yeah. but you're not like hands down. This is what I want. Yeah. This is what I think. And you're wrong. And you're like, if you can just see other people's sides and you're just yeah. assertive, you will get yeah. so much more love and business from people. Right. right. Yeah. And I think, and I think that's like, 
I don't know, you can kind of relate it to like being in a deal with someone. I'm like, yeah. the agent on the other side is not your enemy, guys. Like, no, can we just, why don't we all just be nice, understanding people and everything would just be so much smoother and less stressful. Like, we right. don't need to fight about it. Like, yes, there are some negotiations and that's business and that's fine, but I'm not going to be a jerk to you. Right. Yeah. Isn't the negotiation though with your client not with the other agent. Yeah, All you're for doing sure. Is presenting info, for sure. You yeah. Know? Like, you're just presenting info. You're not actually negotiating with this person because this. Right, because I'm not making any decisions here. Right. <laughs> and neither is that person. And I always right. tell agents when they ask me, I'm like, you don't have to be great at negotiating with another agent. You have to be great at yes. helping your client understand what it is that they want. And clients do not like being like, like strangled. You know, you have to no. like, it's, it's a, it's a gentle, they're going through a lot right now. You know, right. you have to like hold their hand through it essentially. And as long as you can do that, I think they can get on your side and they begin to trust you. And then they listen to you when you give them advice, like this is a better way to go. Sure. Then they'll listen to you. And then it's a little bit easier and it's not like a fight or an argument or a negotiation. It just feels like a conversation. And you're just of service. So you're not, they're not thinking this person's trying to take advantage of me or this person's right. trying to get one over on me or they're, right. are they really working for me? Exactly. Yeah. That's, and, it's and, and I think like with our, with like the millennial generation, we're super anti any of that stuff. So mm -hmm. we can like read it like a book. Like we're like, I don't want to be sold to, I don't like being right. like, that's why being like an influencer on Instagram has gotten so big now. Like people are like, hi like hiring people to genuinely post about things because like we don't like being sold to in a non-genuine way. Yes. Yes. And that's where click funnels come in. ClickFunnels are just, here's the product. Do you want it? No, great. Here's the product again. Do you want it for this price? No. Okay. Well, here's a special, <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. if you want the product, cause you keep clicking, if you want the product, here's the price now. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's genuine, but that's, that's how it is right now. I actually really like my targeted ads. I'm like, yeah, only show me things I might actually want to buy. Like right. I don't want to see ads for like men's razors, you know? Right. <laughs> right. I, I totally get that. So, I'm ha like I'm telling the audience I'm having a lot of just genuine fun with you, oh, right? This, this is an easy. This is an it, right. Like you talked about earlier, this is not an interview. This is just a conversation we're having. Yeah. And I want to make sure that the the audience gets like max value because you are super easy to talk to, but there's a lot of depth with you too. So, you. what else can we give the audience that's deep? That you know, like I said, there are 95% of our listeners are real estate agents. Sure. Hundreds of thousands of downloads every month. We right. want to make sure that people are walking away from these things and really getting value to take action. So sure. what would you say to someone right now who, you know, maybe they're just getting into the business or maybe they're just, they've been in the business a year and now they're finally starting to get serious about it. How can they take action? Literally the moment that they, this podcast ends and they go, I got it. Felicia sure. was so, so helpful. I'm going to take action on this. What's something that they could do to get business like today? Um, okay, sure. So I think that we've heard this a million freaking times. It's very super important to know your why. And yeah. if anybody out there is, is listening to this episode because they hope they aspire to be a 30 under 30 honoree, that is the biggest thing that you need to focus on when you're filling out all the questions and stuff that they're going to ask you and when you're interviewing with them um, is knowing your why is super important. Um, a lot of people just feel like, you know, oh, I know I've heard that a million times, but it's really important for you to dig deep. Like I literally cried when I was answering my questions for the 30 under 30 thing, because that's how deep I was digging. What was um, yours? And, and I know mo a lot of people might feel like, oh, I just don't have anything that special. Like, honestly, we, we are in this business because we love people. And probably most of us are, our why is probably people. Like for me, it's my family. Um, you know, I was the first to go to college. Um, I am assuming I'm going to be a very successful person and I have a lot of people that I need to bring with me, you know? So that, that's my why I look at awesome. my, my family and my, my sister's kids. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is the why, you know, I don't have any kids, but I do have two nieces and two nephews yeah. and I'm, I'm sure that all of them are going to go to college and someone's going to have to pay for that. You know, <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that. So that's your big why it is. It is. Yeah. I mean, you know, being able to empower my family and, you know, I helped one of my cousins buy a house this past year and that was amazing. And I'm hoping to invest soon with my mom 
um, and, and help her set up for her retirement. Um, so just being able to do that from the inside is super important to me. And I have a lot of like things like that, that I need, that I really need to do. Um, and it feels like a need, you know, um, and that's how your why should feel like. It should feel like this is something you need in order to f- be a fulfilled person. Yeah. And then you use this business as a tool, right. not as an identity. Right. Right. I think a lot of people make that choice. It's not a mistake. It's a choice. I know I did. This is a tool. This is a, it's a yeah, catalyst. This isn't your business. literal life. Like right. this is a part of it. And there are, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. No, it is though. It is like there are, you know, many people that this, this is their life. They are a realtor. They are, they are in this business. They are yeah. representing buyers and they, that's yeah. tough. It's yeah. Tough. Sometimes it makes me sad when I meet like, you know, 80 year old agents who are like, you know, I've been doing this for so long. And I'm like, are you tired? And they're like, I love this business. This is my identity. And I'm like, I get it. But there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now that I need to go and see and experience. And like, there's a lot to get done and, and doing selling forever is not going to be the thing to do. Yeah. What does this, uh, what's your typical day look like? Oh man, it is just a mess. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. <laughs> Hit me up if anybody has a really good time blocking system. I'm sure there's actually one in your guys' toolbox. There is. Um, yeah, so I need to work on that for sure. But I'm a runner, not like, oh, I go running, but like I literally run everywhere. Like I, I jog, I don't walk um, because your, I'm just... <laughs> what's your aversion to time blocking? And I only say this because I smell it on myself. What's your, what's your aversion to time blocking? What's is my adverse? Your, yeah, like why my aversion so adverse to it? To time blocking. Oh man, because I I I'm just like a flexible kind of person. I don't like being locked down in things. Some people yeah. might call me a commitment phobe or something, but I just <laughs> I like being like, what in this moment do I feel the most inspired to work on? And what am yes. I going to be the most productive at? And that's what I'll focus on. It's not that I, I don't have focus because I do and I when I want to work on something, I will get it done. But I just, I don't like being tied down to my no. calendar, if that makes sense. What's your disc model? Super high D, super high I? Um, I don't remember, but I okay. think it's, wait, what's a D again? What's a high D? Dominant, seeks massive need for variety. No, I'm, I think I'm like the opposite. I think I'm like a high S and C, I think. Really? I think so. Interesting. Cause that, I that would. Looked at it before this call. I, mean, I, I should have known you were going to ask me that. I, I, you know, I never asked that. I just, I was just thinking about it because like you and I are very similar in terms of a need for variety. And I yeah, like to have a, a lot of variety. I like to have a, I like to have the main pieces, the big rocks throughout the day that I have to hit. And if I hit them at nine, I'm done. And if I hit them by 7 PM, that's when I'm done. But yeah, I get to yeah. be, a, I had a coach that said, just be a butterfly, dude. Just do your thing. As long as your clients are happy and yeah. you're happy. See, I believe in that. And, and this, is, this is what I think about like with any business technique or any system or any social media schedule or whatever, like just do the things that you're good at that you enjoy doing and don't focus on the rest. Um, totally. It's like people ask me all the time, like, how are you so good on social media? And I'm like, because I actually like it and people can tell that and I'm being <laughs> genuine and it's something I'm into and I'm not being salesy, like, because it's something that I actually like. If you hate social media and you hate posting on it, please just delete your accounts. Like I don't, you don't need to be in that space because not everybody needs to do every form of this business. Like you won't see me like really door knocking because that's not my thing. And so like, I just won't do it. I don't enjoy doing it. I don't want to be outside in the heat. I don't want people knocking on my door. I don't want to do it. So I'm just not going to. And I know maybe it would help my business a lot, but but I'd rather be happy than have more business. Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. That's a title of a comment that I got on my certified listing agent course from Rebus University. It's from Bill Reig. This is what Bill says. Bill says, looking to take your listing presentation to the next level? I've closed 100 appointments since I took Pat's certified listing agent course. Five appointments, five new clients, 60 days. Boom. Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. Thanks, Bill. But listen, guys. 
I am offering this to you if you haven't already taken it because so many brokers and teams make their agents take it before they do a single listing appointment. But if you haven't taken it, you can go to rebusuniversity.com and get it now. Now, here's the thing. For 30 days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you that course. I'm going to give you the buyer agent course, which teaches you how to close every single serious buyer that calls on the phone or emails. The certified team agent course is taught by Jeff Cohn, one of America's top agents on how to build a team from zero to hero to hundreds and hundreds of units every year step by step it's like a 12-hour course plus seven other courses yes you heard that right all for a measly 127 bucks a month if you were to go to rebus university and buy these courses individually it cost you over ten thousand dollars but today if you go to futureofrealestatetraining.com that's futureofrealestatetraining.com you'll learn what bill reek did which is how to close a hundred percent of the listing points you go on quite impressive and you'll learn all the other incredible details provided in the 11 five-star courses that are offered yeah it's like all you can eat bizarre you go in now and you pay 127 bucks a month if you can eat all 11 courses in one month that's all you pay is a buck 97 this is a bargain guys get it now future of real estate training.com Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Pat Hyben. And before we jump back into today's content, I want to tell you about an extraordinary offer from an extraordinary company. I'm talking about my Outdesk. If you haven't heard of my Outdesk, basically they are a virtual assistant company, a VA company that specializes in virtual assistance for real estate agents. Yeah, I'm talking about transaction coordinators marketing assistants i'm talking about isas inside sales agents that prospect thousands and thousands of seller leads and buyer lead follow-ups i mean these guys are trained in this stuff specifically you're not using a company that doesn't know or understand real estate sales four out of five of the top teams in the u.s use my outdesk for their virtual assistants and because I know the owner, Daniel Ramsey, I've known him for over a decade, and I know how awesome and incredible this company is and how it saves agents thousands and thousands of dollars every single week and makes them thousands and thousands of more every single week, we are going to give you a $400 coupon off of your first month of a virtual assistant and give you a free book entitled Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. So you can like read it and look into it before you decide anything. It's called Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And you can get it real easy. All you got to do is text the word HIBAN, H-I-B-A-N, to 31996. That's H-I-B-A-N to 31996. And download your free book, Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And don't forget to mention also that you get a $400 discount, which will give you a coupon for that when you download the book. Thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy and make a ton of money using my Outdesk. See, I love that you said that. It, it's, there are so many people that I feel like in our business, they, they grind it because they feel like they have to. Right. And at the same time, they're miserable from like nine to 12 or nine to one every day. Right. I took to social media for, for my business here and just and, and, and increasingly ramping it up. I love that you say that, like, because I, I just don't want a door knock because I don't want to call expires because I don't yeah. feel like it because I don't want to. It's not that you can't. It's not that you won't. It's that you just don't want to. Right. And that's right. okay. So why should I have to? Exactly. I don't want to be obligated to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Super high need for variety. I love that. All right. Yeah. So I want you to tell me about and tell our audience about um, what you do for personal development. Books you read. Obviously, you listen to Real Estate Rockstars. That's a given. But sure. what books do you read? What classes? What seminars do you go to? And while you do that, mm -hmm. I'm going to be on social media with you. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, sure. So I am a big Audible person and a big um, podcast person. So I listen to like TED Talks. I do 
Um, I listen to the Rise podcast, Super Agents Live, um, Tom Ferry, all those guys. Um, as far as books go, um, honestly, I don't. I haven't listened to a book in a long time. I'm not even gonna lie okay. to you. Sure. I'm one of those people who will start a book and then just be like, okay, if I'm not into it, I don't feel obligated to finish it. Obviously. So Super I just. Variety. Don't. You love. Yeah, that's yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for for education pieces, I I am the the chair for our Young Professionals Network here, and so yep. we throw an educational event every month. And a part of that is for me to learn myself. It's not just me throwing this educational event to teach everybody, but it's also a, a method of me learning. Um, right. And I, you know, this year I also got on the California's Young Professional Network. So now it's a statewide thing where I'm like, you know, I have all these people who I'm learning from. And honestly, just sitting in this office with all these top producers, that's my biggest learning point. Like Love I that. am so nosy. I will sit in on anyone's call at any point. And then when they <laughs> hang up, I'll be like, what happened? Tell me, tell me what happened. I would need to learn about this. And I'll right. literally take notes on what's going on in everybody else's transactions. So oh. just need for variety. Yes. And clearly you have passionate curiosity, which are very big staples in a successful person's world. Right. Need for variety is, I don't, I don't know why, but I just, I find a lot of successful people just like to do whatever they want to do. Right. right. That's what entrepreneurial ship is. And then, yeah, there's some structure in there too. But yeah. And then passionate curiosity that bleeds through to all our areas of your life and business. Right. Cause you're saying like, you'll, you'll sit and, and listen to somebody's conversation. You're like, you got to tell me what happened there. Like, I need to know, I need to connect yeah. with that. Yeah. But you also do that with your clients. And I'm sure you're right. asking them questions on how you can best serve them. Right. Exactly. And everybody just wanted to be, wants to be listened to. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, what's, what do you think the future of real estate is happening? Now you're in a, you're in a state that is a very high end, very high price point Right. with, with iBuyer stuff and with wholesaling and with a a lot of stuff going online. Yeah. Um, you know, the companies that are the biggest, uh, let's say like a Zillow or a Redfin, Mm -hmm. these are not, these are not necessarily profitable companies. Um, Maybe they will be one day, but like, where do you think the real estate business goes in the next three to five years in your opinion? Sure. So I think, um, you know, this isn't a new thing. There's been disruptors in our industry forever. So I just don't really concern myself too much with it because I just, I'm not one of those people who needs to freak out about something. I'm just going to keep my head down and focus on what I'm doing and what I know best. And yeah, sure. I'll read the articles and I'll get educated on things, but like, I'm not, you know, when we have like meetings where everybody's freaking out, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Like, we'll be okay. (laughs) Like, you know, it's been around for so long. I don't foresee it dying in my lifetime. Um, And if it does, I'll figure it out when it happens. So (laughs) I'll be resourceful in the moment and I'll be like, cool, it's time to get some variety in my life. Let's switch gears and start working with, you know, maybe I won't be working with buyers anymore. Maybe I'll be doing short sales or maybe I'll be doing like whatever. I don't know what it's going to be, but I am sure I can figure it out. You'll adapt. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's how everybody needs to be. And like, there's no point of freaking out about something that we don't have much control over personally. Like I'm a big believer in like, you know, understanding that you can only control your reaction to things and that's what you should focus on. Nailed that. Yeah, that's a great point. You are in control of you right. and your choices. And that's it. Whether you think you don't have one or not, you have a choice on how you react. Yes, and yeah. our emotions. Our emotions are, are, are tied to our actions and our brain. Like you right. are your brain and you are in control of your brain. So sure. handle it. <laughs> handle it. Handle that All brain, right. man. I want to talk about failure with you. Sure. I want to know what your biggest failure to date is and how it has basically done a 180 to be one of the things that serves you today like in general like in my in, life in business in business in, in business or uh, you know I mean, in life in general but i definitely want a business failure have, that you're like well, that's have you not. seen me like do you think i have business failure failures just like <laughs> laying around like uh no i you know what i think i haven't experienced it yet i think i have not hit that big pivotal moment where i'm like shit i totally messed that up sure. um and that's very lucky for me because I have amazing mentors and I have people I can ask for help. Um, So I think because I have people watching over me, it hasn't happened yet. Um, So I don't have anything, but I'm sure if somebody hits me up in a year, I bet you all have a really great story for you. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So Felicia, what else would you like to leave our, uh, our audience with gift wise? Oh yeah. So, um, 
first of all, everybody needs to go onto Instagram and follow me. Um, you can search my name, Felicia Modis, or you can look at at F-E-L dot Modis. That's my handle. Um, I am leaving you guys with an Instagram guide that I created specifically for your listeners. Nice. Yeah. So in there, there's going to be, you know, the first like bunch of pa- it's it's pretty long. I'm not going to lie. The first like 10 pages is just like intro stuff. Um, but the real meat of it is going to be at the end of the packet where you will see um, all the apps that I use to make my Instagram um, cohesive and beautiful and um, fun for my followers. I love that. Absolutely love that. So that is huge. Social media guide. That's big. So um, where we can, where you can find that to the audience is, um, and, and, and Felicia, all her contact details, social media handle, everything, including her gift will be at hyphen digital backslash Felicia Mares, M A R E S. So, um, all guest info will be there. Free gift will be there. Another way you can get your gift is go to the agent toolbox where you can find Felicia's gift as well as every other guest's gift. Check it out in the Agent Success Toolbox, which can be found at hybendigital.com forward slash toolbox. Or if you tech people out there, you want to text it, text the word toolbox to 44499. Nine. <laughs> text the word. Man, you killed that. that text the word toolbox to 444999. So, Felicia. Yes, my dear. This has been a real pleasure. It's been so fun. We could probably sit and just hang for like two hours and just. Okay, you know. cool. I have like um, a keg here at my office, so Is I'm going to pour really? myself a beer. Yeah. That. That's awesome. Well, Felicia Mares from the Bay Area in California, second year in business, killing it. Uh, stepped up into the National Association of Realtors, 30 under 30 people to watch out for. Oh, Uh, thank you. And, you know, if anybody out there is hoping to become a 30 under 30 realtor, please reach out to me because I'd love to give you some tips. Yeah, for sure. So remember, you can find you can find um, everything about Felicia at hybendigital.com forward slash Felicia Mares, M-A-R-E-S. Mares, sorry. I forgot that. I forgot the roll on the R. (laughs) You got it. (laughs) Felicia, thank you so much for being on Real Estate Rockstars. Thank and we you. will definitely have you on another time as your success continues to build. Thank you so much, Ian. You're very welcome. And um, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye. I want you to think about the word toolbox. What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you can think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox. And it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you gotta do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, 
the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.